This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. So sometimes uh, I'm not really sure what we should talk about and um, on the podcast. Yeah. And I don't want to be redu- redundant, but because it's your life, you know, it's, it's you know, um, fluid, so it's kind of not concrete. Well, <laughs> your ideas are concrete, but, yes. you know, life is certainly not. Right. Um, and so what's different this time is that you had an idea that you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Something you wanted to talk about. Yeah. So take it away. Um, so one of the things that you and I have had difficulties with in regards to me <laughs> uh, is that I have uh, these instances where as you've explained to me it feels like to you that I do things for you guys because I want something oh Okay, right, right. I know what you're okay, I know what you're talking about. So what what happens is there are times that if I ask you to do something or if I need your participation and it's reasonable, mhm. Uh we we meaning everybody in the household seems like we have to work around your schedule or your mood or your um pain level because a lot of times when we'll start something together let's just say yard work Mm because you know let's just say that we're out there and all of a sudden you've disappeared right and or you know then you say that something hurts and you can't you can't do it so i i think that we're talking about the same thing right so whenever i so what it is is that you it's like Like, it's like pulling teeth to get you to do something that you don't want to do but when there's something that you do want to do that's about to happen, you are super available. And super helpful, yeah. And it seems like there's that pattern that is, uh, I know you, and I don't, I mean, maybe I'm being duped. I don't think it's that, but there's something. And regardless of of the reality of it or not, it's very hard on this side of that. Right. Yeah. It, but that is what you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And what has occurred to me within the last two or three days, I think, mm-hmm. is that on my end, the, the reason that it that it seems like that out to out to others other than me, that I'm that. Bleh, why it seems that to you guys that it, I might be taking advantage of you or something, I, however you want to say it, that's not how I'm doing it at all. That's not what I'm doing at all. It, What it is is that my perspective it, is that I am excited to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And because I'm in this, oh yes, I can do anything. I can do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. What can I do to help? Is the thought that comes to my mind. And because I'm in this high, so to speak, I'm more available. I'm more helpful than usual. I'm ready to do things when it uh before my planned event would happen so it's not that i'm being manipulative or anything like that it's i'm on a high let's keep it up there well let me just 
make sure that you understand this. I don't think that you're manipulative. Right. That's not what that feels like. What that feels like is that everything is always on your terms. And so it gets very frustrating that really the time that you're super available always precedes you getting to do something that you want to do. And and so so the same scenario everything being equal if you have an event later on you're going to be very pleasant and uh over the top helpful you know like, like what can i do what can i do to help yeah uh, and you're in a, a a happy light airy mood yeah and so so same scenario without you having something that's following um it feels to me like there would be you just these all of these things have happened where okay so you've disappeared mm-hmm. um you say that something hurts or you um have a hard time even following through on those instructions and and often you're just not going to do it so it's the same exact so if everything is equal so, and i mean i'm talking about i'm talking about um just doing things that you're responsible for in you know living in the house right you know, I we, we could be talking about taking out the, the the trash. We could be talking about clearing the dishwasher. We could be talking about, you know, doing your laundry. Right. And so, I, I never thought about it as you being manipulative, but I certainly don't understand it, and I don't. I, I it, sometimes it's it's just frustrating, regardless. Right. Right. All right. So, that's my experience anyway, is that it's it's kind of always up to your mood, right? right. It's up to, you know, because that's kind of the struggle, is if you don't want to do something, you're not doing it. No matter the consequences or no matter what, it feels like if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. Because you're not going to just flat out and say, no, I'm not doing it. When you don't do something that we've relied on you to do or asked you to do, you don't say no. You say okay, and then you disappear. Regardless, you don't do it. Right? Uh, I guess. So, Mike, am, am I talking about something different than what you wanted to talk about? Um... I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, it might be the same? It might be. Because those things that I'm just describing, mm-hmm. I'm thinking that if you have something to do afterwards or that's coming up, you seem much more available. And so describe that. Cause, so let's just say that what I'm talking about is not what you're talking about. Talk more about what you're talking about. Um. So whenever I'm... Whenever I'm, uh, like, uh, geez, um, let's say I'm, I have plans to go bowling. Okay. And it's at, I don't know, 5 o'clock p.m. Okay. If there is nothing else going on during the day that is planned like that, I... (laughs) Okay. Uh, I, uh... will wake up and... Oh, jeez, I... Oh. Are you losing your train of thought? I'm, tr- I'm sort of. 
It's like okay. I'm trying to think of what I do. Oh. But just take a deep breath. <laughs> okay. Just take a deep breath. So I... Whenever it gets closer to the time, let's say three or four hours out... Mm-hmm. I will... I will uh, start getting, for lack of a better way of saying it, an endorphin high. Okay. And because I'm excited to do this. Mm-hmm. And so because I'm feeling good about it and everything else like that, mm-hmm. I will go to you guys and I'll say, hey, what can I do around here? Because, because I'm on this, this, uh, I keep saying a high, but it's not a high. It, it, it is, but it isn't. Well, you seem very different. When yeah. it happens, you seem very available. Yeah. I would say, in my language, that your energy shifts. Okay. And so that, instead of being a... Sometimes that heavier kind of energy that when you don't feel well or Mm -hmm. when you don't want to do something, um, yes, the energy shifts and you have more energy, you're more talkative, you laugh easier, you're just very, um, very much available, whereas other times you're not. Okay, yeah. And so whenever I'm... Feeling like that, I want, I tend to think more about, or my thought process is more like, hey, what can I do around here? Because, well, maybe not because, but I think that part of it is that it is. I become a little bit more aware of what's going on around me, Mm -hmm. and because I'm in a better mood, I am not so stuck up here in my head, so I'm seeing more of what's around me so I'm noticing things that can that need to be done or can be done or anything like that or at least the, the opportunity to so I what I think to do is I ask you or I ask dad mm-hmm. hey what can I do around here and What really struck me, uh, I don't even remember what it was for, what I was going to be doing, but what really struck me is that the last time that this really happened, Mm -hmm. I think it was this week, this last weekend or something like that, Mm -hmm. oh, I went to the movies, Mm -hmm. and... I went up to you and dad, and I said, hey, what can I do to help out around here? And both you and dad kind of deflated a little bit, it it seemed like. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you want now? Mm. It's like, huh? Because it, I didn't want anything, I just wanted to help. And it really struck me that this happens so often that or where I where if I have something planned for myself that I enjoy that um I that's when I tend to be more helpful with you guys and around the house Mm mhm And whenever you you ask me that, it's like, what do you want now? Not even like that. It not even now. But uh, what uh, what is it you want? 
was what you asked me. <laughs> yeah, I, it doesn't. And, what do you want now has a very different feeling to me and, than than what do you want? Yeah. Um, yeah, that feels very different because yeah. what do you want now sounds very condescending. Right. It, and, I didn't mean to say now. Okay. Okay. Um, right. And you're right. It happens enough and it is a pattern that we see mm-hmm. to a point that we see that when something is coming up for you, you are available and helpful. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like you're not helpful, you know, all the other times when you don't have anything. It's just that you are, you are, you know, on track. Right. You're proactive. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just in, very, in a, very in different. A way, in a way that I'm usually not. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So... When you feel that, and you saw it, what did you think the other day when you maybe saw that for the first time? It was... Disheartening. It, uh... It really it hurt a little bit, and it's I mean it's kind of hard to describe, but it's I mean, you, you've you pointed out to me before that even Nana notices it. Yeah. Yeah. And she's crazy. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that. But, um, not, not to her face. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Mm. I, know, uh, I know I'm messing with you. Yeah. But, uh... It's... The first time that I noticed it, like that I really noticed it, and even with you pointing it out to me before, this is the first time it's really hit me. Mm-hmm. Well, what felt different? So, so when you noticed this, when this happened, in that moment, what did you, what did it feel like, and what did you realize? The premise behind this particular podcast, actually, was what I realized. And that is that I am not... I'm still having difficulty putting it into words. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I am not trying to slight you guys. I'm not trying to diss you guys. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. it's it's very it's very much the case that I I'm happy so why can't I share it that's the kind of feeling that I have whenever I get like that. It's like you're feeling good and you want to share your joy. Yeah. Okay. And so... But what change... What's the... In... Go ahead. So whenever I realized what, how you guys were feeling about that, mm-hmm. it was like someone dumped a bucket of water on me because it it was so shocking to me and 
and it wasn't it wasn't a good feeling so I'm sorry go ahead how did you get through that feeling I went to the movies mm-hmm. <laughs> and saw yeah. a good movie. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I say that in jest, but at the same time, it's true. It is true, yeah. yeah. I, I went to the movies with RJ mm-hmm. and... Uh, So does it change anything? The fact that you had this realization, something that occurred to you for the first time ever, does it change anything? I think that it gives me a point of interest to look into. In the sense that if I have things planned... And I'm more on this upbeat, happy mm-hmm. feeling more of the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm more focused at those points. Mm-hmm. Then if I have more things planned, and I'm like that more often, I'll get more things done around the house. So you think that maybe there's just this... this um, there's kind of a sadness. I don't know if it's depression or not. But you're saying when you don't have things in your life that you look forward to, nothing really... Happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that come up for me when you're talking about all that. One of them is that, um, you know... You are talking very much about feelings. You are talking about seeing how somebody else experienced a situation. And uh, that is something that you worked very hard in your life to get to a point for that to happen. Yeah. Because it didn't, it just wasn't a natural inclination. Right. You know, for, for years. Right. So the fact that you recognize that in the moment is huge. And I think that you recognizing that you need to have more in your life to keep you happy and and we're, we're I think we're hoping that the job does that. Yeah. Yeah. Um and uh, so there's that, and, and hopefully that will make a difference. So basically what you're saying is, when you don't have anything going on in your life... It you, becomes stagnant. And you don't... Right. Yeah. Well, what? So, so let's talk about that for just a second. When you don't have anything going on, and you're asked to do something, why... What happens... Um, like how does that feel it like can you give me give sure me an example? does it just fly out of your head as no, soon no, as you're no. asked I mean like an example oh, sorry so if you're asked to do something does it just fly out of your head and it doesn't stick if um, it's not a, a timed um, um responsibility that so in other words it doesn't have to be done by a certain time then you just kind of go I'll get that later or because it it can be very uncomfortable um because you seem a lot of times really and you'll even say to me I'm out of it yeah yeah um You you gave me a bunch of uh, a bunch of examples of how I would feel. I think what I'm needing right now is examples of situations. 
if that makes any sense. Um, you mean, okay, so situations of when it is that I've asked you to do something? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's just... As an example, not, not necessarily a, uh, something that's happened. Okay, so I, I asked you to, to um, come and uh, vacuum the carpet. Okay. Uh, one thing I've noticed in, in for examples like this mm -hmm. is that depending on what's also going on around me, like, do I also have to watch the pup? Do I have to... Do I have something else going on? Do I... So all of that stuff goes on in your head? Yeah. Before you ever get to something? Yeah. Well, first of all... And it's... and not just that, but it also... It also can sidetrack me from... Mm -hmm. From doing it, and then I forget about it. Because so, I'm so... So what's the difference in that feeling? If you can articulate this... When you don't have something going on versus when you do. And you said it's like this endorphins. Mm -hmm. How does it feel different? You just, uh, uh, what you're describing is, I don't want to sure that I understand what you're saying. You just have clarity? Yeah. It, um, as strange as it may sound, this is the best way I can explain it, is that whenever I don't have things going on that I'm planning for, mm -hmm. There, there's so much stuff going on in my head that is difficult for me to get out of my head and do the things in real life. Whereas if I have something planned, it's very concrete. It's very, I need to do this, this, and this to get to there. Mm -hmm. And so it's very clear mm -hmm. in my head. Right. And so... It's kind of a mix-up between the two where if I have something planned, I don't really have much going through my head hmm. uh, uh, to sidetrack me. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm not doing anything, there's so much going through my head, I'm sidetracked from everything. Hmm. When you're planning on doing something and it's that you look forward to... Mm -hmm. um, Do you feel like then that the sensory overload that you deal with is less? And that's what you're talking about? In some cases, yes. Um, because in, Because that's not all the time. So... When so, I when I say that whenever there's nothing going on that's planned, mm -hmm. that there's stuff going through my head and everything mm -hmm. that makes it difficult, I'm not talk I'm not just talking about things that can overwhelm me from outside, uh, from external uh, influences. Yeah. Okay. It. Such as being, like, it's being too bright or something like that. Right, right, yeah. Uh, it is more so that I have so many random thoughts going through my head about so many different things mm -hmm. that I can be so easily sidetra sidetracked that I forget what I'm supposed to be doing very easily. Mm -hmm. So... You've said before that when people have conversations with you, that it's important to be concrete, to not be abstract. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be very clear on what it is that is being asked of you. Yes. Or else it's too complicated and you feel it's too convoluted in order to even start, start yeah. on something. Because it's, it's, too, it's, it's too overwhelming. Right. Um. Um, so what you're saying is that when you have something planned, and I think you're saying too, like this is the first time you're really thinking this through yes. and, and realizing this in this way. Yes. So these are my words. I just want to see if I if I'm if I'm with you here. That 
when you have something planned that I would that I'm really looking forward to you're focused on it more so all of the random thoughts that you typically deal with are not taking place or if they are they're they're so muted mm-hmm. that they're a non-issue at that time okay okay and so it's that narrow focus on something yes okay and that narrow focus on something helps you to participate and do the have an easier time with your responsibilities than if you didn't have something you were looking forward to right okay and when you don't have something to look forward to and it's, isn't that a depressing thought <laughs> <laughs> yes yes um when you're not doing something um what does that feel like then In my head? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Um, partially, I'm kind of listless. Like, I'm j- I am just don't know where to go from here. Mm-hmm. And partially, it's that I'm also just overwhelmed by everything. That I just... Because, whether it be thoughts of all kinds of different things... Mm-hmm. Or what's going on around me, or whatever. You know, I'm just overwhelmed by it all. Yeah. So it that makes it very difficult, especially if the kids are here. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I can barely concentrate whenever the kids are here. Yeah. Because they're they're just doing so much. Mm-hmm. They're very busy. Yeah. Yeah, and there's two of them. Very yeah. different than with just one. Yeah. And they're so close in age that it's just. <laughs> And, and everything Connor does, Madison does. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so, yeah. It's yes. I <laughs> yep. I understand. Um, so now that you had this this revelation, mm-hmm. do you and you see the connection? Is there anything that you'll be able to do to make a difference? My thought. Is that if I start to plan more more things out mm-hmm. that I would have fun doing or whatever mm-hmm. that I would be able to think things through much easier in the in the hours and stuff like that coming up to those mm-hmm. and that I'd be able to get more done here. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it would be very uh, beneficial to, yes, me, but also to you guys. Mm-hmm. And not just for doing things around the house, but also mentally and everything. I think that would, that would be much easier on everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. It it would be, and you know, um, it's the whole country and, and world, you know, has been stuck inside, has not been able to do all the things that we that we typically do. Yeah. And um, you know, some things are getting back to, back to the way they used to be, but yeah. um, you know, it's it's interesting because I think that a lot of us can relate to what you just said. Like, you don't have anything going on. You don't, how do you, you know, it's it's not as easy to get something done when, it's it's like. It's like, what's the point? Well, and that's why, you know, during COVID, people have binge watched, you know, show after show after show, you know. We're even, coming, even shows that you don't really care yeah, for. Yeah, and we're coming out of, you know, we're coming out of COVID 800 pounds heavier, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. Don't so, call me out like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, I get it because I see what you're saying is that when you have something in your life that you're looking forward to, it makes you feel better all the way around. Yeah. And I just think it's awesome that you had this new um, experience of seeing this and recognizing it and making that connection. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. 
So let me ask you something. When, when I've asked you to do something and you don't have anything planned. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Um, and you, and it's a struggle. What are your, what would you want uh, us to do to get you motivated and to, you know, and for anybody else out there that, that has family, a family member on the spectrum that, cause you get, um, you do get more, you, you get stuff done when yeah. you're feeling great. Yeah. Um... And for I, and for you, I'm sorry. Does it just come? The thing that makes you feel this way is you going out with and doing the things that you want to do and and exp- experiencing those things. Yes. Out right, and that's what does it for you. Yeah. Okay. And I think that you know what? Hmm. When was the last time the chore chart worked for me? Um, I don't know. When I was in middle school, I had, there was a point system that we did. Every time I did a chore, I got a certain number of points. Mm -hmm. And after a certain number of points, I could redeem those for things. Right, yep. Such as going to the movies. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'm a bit too old for that to work. Mm. But it's that same concept. Of what I realized like, just a couple of days ago about mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. but for so there's a payoff. Yes. So this big payoff for you is doing this thing that you are looking forward to doing mm-hmm. because I'm assuming it makes you feel better yeah. in your mind and in your body. Yeah. That you're able to function. Because there's this thing that you're very much looking forward to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. I remember doing that. Yeah, and that was pretty much the last time it actually worked. (laughs) (laughs) Would you agree with that? uh, I don't don't remember. It worked really well. Yeah. It did. Especially compared to all the other times that we tried different things. Mm -hmm. So, I think that for people... For parents and older siblings and and people that are taking care of others that are younger on the spectrum, mm-hmm. I think that having something like that where if they do certain things for a number number of times or get points or whatever like that, mm-hmm. uh, if there was a, a motivator. Mm-hmm to that was at the end of it all mm-hmm. that they like a goal that they could that they could work towards right. I think that that would really help out some of the some of the uh, but it has to be something that they would look forward to yes yes because that's a big deal because there, there's been times you know in your life where I thought that you would like something, and then turns out it was too loud, yeah. or it was too bright, or yeah. they were, you know, too busy. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's. Yeah, I remember that. It did work, didn't it? Yeah. And I think that that would really help help the uh, younger people in the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh, to so it was a it was a point a point system and different chores were assigned so many points. Yes. And then you could go above and beyond that and get even more points. So like if you wanted to go out and rake the leaves, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and that was a separate set of points above and beyond. Right. right? Each different chore was a different amount of points. Mm-hmm. And when you did things that you needed to do, you also got points. I don't know if you remember that or not. Like getting an A or something like that. Well, I, um, 
No, I kind of blew that one in oh, a different okay. way. Okay. Um, yeah, so so what I mean is like for brushing your teeth, mm -hmm. you would, you know, that like that personal hygiene stuff you would you would get um, a point for. No, with your car, what what happened with the 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 grades? So look, I come from you know this this these doctors are like yeah he's not ever gonna be able to go to mainstream school and he's you know, and so you do. Mm -hmm. You're there in school. You have a TSS, and then you you know you didn't have a TSS, and you were in ninth grade, and it was felt overwhelming to you. And mm -hmm. but uh, I, what we said was that, look, if you <laughs> you apply yourself, and and you get the best grade that you can get. I don't know if you remember we didn't we didn't say. I don't think. Like there was no punishment. You never got punished for bad grades, but right. So, but I never got bad grades. Mm -mm. So what I said was that, in your dad, we talked about it. I'm like, yeah, if you get these these good grades all the way through high school, we'll buy you a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, oh, we had to buy you a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. So that was just kind of different. The grades weren't part of the point that point system. Right. That was just an an outside deal. Yeah. That it was motivator. Yes, it was a motivator, but it not motivator. <laughs> uh motivator. Uh -huh. But at the same time it was not dependent on the chores or anything like that. Correct. Correct. But yeah, you could earn, you know, for, for any number of things, you would have some points to watch TV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, yeah. just to go to the store and get something. Yeah, like a candy bar or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, even even going to the movies was a certain number of points. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yep. That was really good. I don't know why we. Uh, who knows? Hmm. Who knows? But it was a good one. Yeah. It really does make a difference. Yeah. So, very, very cool. Is there anything else? Um, not, nothing comes immediately to mind. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's very cool. I'm, yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome when the, it's like ahas happen. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, I, so, so do you think that the solution would be then for you to have more um, it, planned in your life, more yeah. more activities, more just yeah. just yeah, more and, events to look forward to, mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to overwhelm myself and everything. Sure. So, it's going to be interesting to try and find uh, that balance for yeah. yourself. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, good job, Q5. Whoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, this is a great job, Josh. Thanks. It's, a, it's an awesome conversation. Yeah. Yeah, so any everybody out there, if you like what we do, give us five stars, please, because it helps us to be found and seen and heard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we really appreciate that. And... Uh, um, yeah, send us some email if if you'd like. It's uh, you just go to sonyaking dot com. It's uh, s o n y k i n g. No, no, s o n y a k i n g. What did I say? S o n y k i n g. S o n y. Oh, s o n y. I said it. S o n y a k i n g dot com. Are you sure that's not what I said? I'm sure. All right, we have it on tape. Uh, uh, um <laughs> yes go to that one <laughs> go to that one then um yes and uh you can find some some um other podcasts blogs oh. pictures stuff like that yeah. hopefully pretty soon we're gonna that's where we're gonna have our schedule yeah. posted so now that things are opening i can't wait i'm so yeah. excited yeah that'll be fun mm -hmm. yep so uh everybody out there i hope that you're happy and healthy and we will talk to you next week love you bye